now that we have the part on a work table, we want to make sure that the part isn't moving. We want to make sure the arm is stable. Um, if the part is moving or it has the potential of moving from touching it, uh, we can either fixture it down with tie downs. Um, a lot of times I would just use hot glue. Um, so I'm going to hot glue a couple of points right around the part just to make sure it doesn't move. So now that everything's fixtured, everything's tied down, we have the model loaded. Um, we are going to hit create target and we're going to select our alignment holes, which will be these four on top. So now that we have those four holes selected, I want to tell the software how I'm going to measure it. So I'm going to highlight the targets, right click, say edit target. I'm going to make them a target type axis. And the measurement method is a plane and a circle. So what I want to do is measure a plane on the spot face and the hole, plane, hole, plane, hole, to get the exact location that I'd selected. So when I'm ready, I'm going to hit run auto alignment. I'm going to unstow the arm. I'm going to put it into a good position of measurement. Uh, with these arms, you can get higher accuracy if you minimize the movement of the encoders. So this position is a really good working one, especially if that's the only position I need to be in during the entire inspection. I'd minimize the encoder movement to the fifth, sixth, seventh axis where these ones are, uh, are moving very minimally. So now it's asking me to measure four points for the plane. Now four points for a circle. Now move to the next hole. that far hole. So now we have our results and we see that our RMS is a thou and one tenth. So it's a good alignment. All the holes are in position pretty much under a thousandth in any direction. So I'm going to accept the alignment. Now Verisurf, after your alignment by default, is set up to immediately put you into inspect mode. Basically what that is, is a real time comparison. Uh, and I have surfaces selected. So it'll be a real time part inspection of the actual condition against the model or the nominal. So on the screen, it's telling me negative three thousandths, which basically means that the actual part to the whole alignment is three thousandths lower than perfect. Our tolerance is set up right now as a profile of four thousandths, so plus or minus two. Anything above or below plus or minus two will be red or orange in the negative, and anything above it will be blue. So what I can do during this mode is actually trigger. And start collecting data. So I can either just touch trigger, I can press P on the keyboard, which switch it into continuous point mode. I can gather a lot of data, or I can switch it over to the scanner. I'll put it into automatic exposure mode. This will basically set the exposure to either shiny surface or a dark flat surface. So the nice part about a blue light laser is that it has a high dynamic range so it can switch in between those darks and flats to shiny or glossy silvers or brighter colored stuff. So it minimizes the amount of spraying you would have to do on some parts like you had to in the past. So now I'm going to highlight those same surfaces and I'm going to hit inspect or build mode again. 
Now go ahead and start scanning measurements. So now we can see we have quite a bit of data on that surface. Uh, just in a few seconds, that took over 40,000 points. So I just selected two small surfaces on the part, um, but this scanner does spit out 600,000 points per second. So now I'm gonna measure the sides of the part. So I'm gonna hit measure a plane. We'll do four point planes on them. So that information at the bottom of the screen will tell you the flatness. That plane was flat within seven ten thousandths. That one was flat within nine ten thousandths. That one's pretty flat too. It's a nice part about the arm is being able to reach around parts, whereas some of the other devices, you're limited by line of sight. So this arm can reach around and under quite a bit. Um, so now that we have some profile data, it's what the customer wanted to see. We have our holes and we have planes. We're going to highlight everything we want to put into a report. I'm going to hit report. And now here, I'm only going to show what I'm reporting. We have our tolerance, our measured nominal tolerance, our deviation. So that's how I want all the holes to report. Then our planes, what we'll do is plane one and two. They wanted no perpendicularity. Same with plane four and three. And they wanted no distance between one and three. And two and four. So we see we're out of tolerance by just under a thousandth of an inch on that distance and we're within tolerance there. So uh, what I'm gonna do is Say I want to only report the summary of all those points we scanned with. I want to add a nice screenshot of it. I want to put that right above that inspection. Maybe I want to take a screenshot of the actual hole locations. minus the balloons. So now we'll update our screenshot with the holes, put that at the top. So from here, we can modify our header information, have some output settings that we can switch from inches to millimeters, decimal places. We can report out in PDF, HTML, or various types. But we're just gonna put out a PDF report. So basically we have our picture and all the necessary information for the report, including the profile screenshot. We have our perp perpendicularities and our distances between them. So that's it, PDF report. So that was a basic overview of the arm setup, the accessories that come with the arm. 
Um, we went through the calibration process of probing and the scanner. We also have a part here that we use for alignment, scanning profiles, grabbing some prismatic data, and a simple report. And this part was just an in-process inspection part, uh, but we could very well use the arm for final inspection. We can also use it to scan a part and reverse engineer it to a surface that we can use to machine or fabricate around. And also the arm can go straight to the machine where we can use a fixture plate to tie it down and check a part before it even comes off the machine. I think the biggest advantage of these things is that we can take the inspection to the part instead of having the part sit in a CMM lab with sometimes a whole turnover of a day. So this with its dynamic thermal expansion settings inside the software and its thermal stability of the composite body is able to quickly measure parts whether they're cold or hot. So if you have any other questions about the arm or you want to schedule an in-person or web demo, please contact us at the information below. Thank you.